Colombia has a unique reputation in South America, above all as a narco state, but Colombia has a lot more to offer than just cocaine and drug lords, and we want you to get the complete picture of this often talked about but poorly understood country. So get ready to experience the 10 things you didn't know about Colombia. Colombia's most well-known export is almost certainly cocaine and other drugs derived from it. Colombia's reputation as the preeminent narco state was first achieved during the 1970s. Complicated drug trafficking routes and convoluted illegal arrangements with local and foreign authorities gave Colombia its incredible reputation as the greatest narco state in the New World. And this was even highlighted and mentioned in the 80s cult classic Miami Vice, where most of the drug activity originated from Colombia, with Miami being a major delivery port and source of conflict between the drug cartels and local police. Both local corruption and foreign corruption in the highest ranks, including, it is rumored, in the American government itself, has prevented authorities from getting a grip on the drug trafficking issues stemming from Colombia. Colombia has acted in a more aggressive way than most of the countries which signed the 1988 Vienna Convention against illicit traffic in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances by including chemicals and drug precursors that are freely traded in the rest of the world in the list of nationally controlled substances. Sadly, Colombia's once great reputation as the leader in drug trafficking and drug production is slowly being eclipsed by other countries in South America and Central American countries, but Colombians will always be able to view themselves as the first and best in this special trade, and that is something to be proud of. One of the most infamous Colombian drug lords was Pablo Escobar. His cartel, at the height of his career, supplied an estimated 80% of the cocaine smuggled into the United States, turning over $21.9 billion a year in personal income. Often called the quote-unquote king of cocaine, he was the wealthiest criminal in history with an estimated known net worth of $30 billion by the early 1990s, equivalent to about $55 billion as of 2016, making him one of the richest men in the world in his prime. Escobar was born in Rio Negro, Colombia, and grew up near Medellin. After briefly studying at the Universidad Autonoma Latinoamericana of Medellin, he left without a degree and began to engage in criminal activity that involved selling contraband cigarettes, along with fake lottery tickets, and participated in motor vehicle theft. In the 1970s, he began to work for various contraband smugglers, often kidnapping and holding people for ransom before beginning to distribute powder cocaine himself, as well as establishing the first smuggling routes into the United States in 1975. His infiltration to the drug market of the US expanded exponentially due to the rising demand for cocaine, and by the 1980s, it was estimated that 70 to 80 tons of cocaine were being shipped from Colombia to the US on a monthly basis. His drug network was commonly known as the Medellin Cartel, which often competed with rival cartels domestically and abroad, resulting in high-rate massacres and the deaths of police officers, judges, locals, and prominent politicians. In 1982, Escobar was elected as an alternate member of the Chamber of Representatives of Colombia as part of the Colombian Liberal Party. Through this, he was responsible for the construction of many hospitals, schools, and churches in Western Colombia, which gained him popularity inside the local Roman Catholic Church, as well as with the locals of the towns he frequented. However, Escobar was vilified by the Colombian and American governments due to the exploits of his political power, which resulted in Colombia becoming the murder capital of the world at the time. In 1993, Escobar was shot and killed by Colombian National Police in his hometown 24 hours after his 44th birthday. It may sound strange, but Colombia is one of the world's leaders in the implementation of butt implants, or the surgical enhancement of the buttocks, specifically for women. No one really knows the reason for this, but there are many theories around to explain this strange trend, the most prominent of which claims that Colombian beauty standards for women place a premium on curves, and thus women feel compelled to get buttock surgery. Colombians are perhaps unfairly often seen as the most superficial of South Americans, so this might have something to do with it, but the ultimate reason for this obsession with butt implants will likely remain mysterious. 
The rainforests of Colombia contain some of the greatest biodiversity in the world, but as is the case in many such situations, the rainforest is under near permanent threat of destruction by way of deforestation and human greed and disregard. Even the violence caused by the drug war that rages on in Colombia is a threat to the maintenance of the rainforest and the hundreds of native species that require its presence to survive. Furthermore, rare medicines have been obtained from the rainforest, and it would be in Colombia's best interest to maintain it. But given human trends, this seems unlikely. Colombian cuisine includes the cooking traditions and practices of Colombia's Caribbean shoreline, Pacific coast, mountains, jungles, and ranch lands. Colombian cuisine varies regionally and is influenced by the indigenous Chipcha, Spanish, African, Arab, and even some Asian cuisines, and thus is incredibly varied, offering something for everyone. Colombia's varied cuisine is influenced by its diverse fauna and flora as well as the cultural traditions of the ethnic groups that live there. Colombian dishes and ingredients vary widely by region. Some of the most common ingredients are cereals such as rice and maize, tubers such as potatoes and cassava, assorted legumes, meats including beef, chicken, pork and goat, fish and seafood. Tostones or fried plantain slices are universally popular as well as bandeja paisa which is red beans cooked with pork, white rice, carne molida, chicharron, fried egg, plantain chorizo, arepa, hogao sauce, black pudding, avocado and lemon served on a platter or tray. The revolutionary armed forces of Colombia's People's Army commonly referred to as FARC-EP, is a guerrilla movement involved in the continuing Colombian armed conflict since 1964. It has been known to employ a variety of military tactics, in addition to more unconventional methods, including terrorism. The FARC-EP, which formed during the Cold War period as a Marxist-Leninist peasant force, promotes a political line of agrarianism and anti-imperialism. The operations of the FARC-EP were funded by kidnapping and ransom, illegal mining, extortion, or taxation of various forms of economic activity, and the taxation, production, and distribution of illegal drugs. United Nations has estimated that 12% of all killings of civilians in Colombian conflicts have been committed by FARC and ELN guerrillas, with 80% committed by right-wing paramilitaries and the remaining 8% committed by security forces. FARC has been a thorn in the Colombian government's side for decades, but recently, on August 25, 2016, the Colombian president, Juan Manuel Santos, announced that four years of negotiation have secured a peace deal with FARC and that a national referendum would take place on the 2nd of October. The referendum failed, with 50.24% voting against it. The Colombian government and FARC met up on November 24 and signed a revised peace deal which the Colombian Congress approved on November 30th. These moves, hopefully, will bring an end to this violent chapter of Colombia's history. These green gemstones have had a long history in Colombia, and for good reason, as Colombian emeralds constitute 50 to 95% of the world's production of emeralds, the number depending on the year, source, and emerald grade. The emerald is one of the most coveted precious gems in the world, and Colombia is its number one source. However, that is not all to the story of Colombian emeralds, as the Colombian mining industry has been known to engage in child labor, employing children aged 5 to 14 years old. Some estimates suggest that as much as 20% of the Colombian mining labor is composed of underage children. Some people think that is horrific. Others think this is a small price to pay for one of the most elusive gemstones in the world. The regions of Caldas, Quindío, and Rizaralda are known as the Coffee Triangle, filled with coffee plantations, farmhouses, and a rich Java culture. Visitors can participate in coffee tasting, awakening the senses to a deeper knowledge and appreciation of all the sensory characteristics that define a coffee of excellence. Coffee production in Colombia has a reputation as producing mild, well-balanced coffee beans. Colombia's average annual coffee production of 11.5 million bags is the third total highest in the world, after Brazil and Vietnam. You would never think it, but Colombia is a highly sought-after destination for whale watching. Annually, from July to November, humpback whales flee the cold South Pole for the warmer waters of the Colombian Pacific. 
Visitors will watch as males jump out of the water, trying to court the females, who give birth to baby calves. For your best bet at seeing the action, head to Bahia Solano in Colombia's Choco region. Colombia has the greatest avian diversity in the entire world, with over 1,876 bird species. Colombia attracts bird watchers from all over the world, especially in the coffee triangle. Even in the 21st century, new species are continually being discovered, with some of the most recent being the chestnut-capped pia, munchique wood wren, styles in upper magdalena, gorgeted puffleg, scarlet ibis, and the antioquia brushfinch. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.